Hi, uh, Amazing Atheist. Um, I'm actually uh, trying to attach two videos to your video on Buddhism. Um, I first wanted to say that I've liked most of your videos. I think that um, I agree with you as an atheist uh, most of the time, but I found your last video on Buddhism. I don't know how long it's been on the, the internet, but I just saw it. Um, <clears throat> since I said a lot in my last video, I'm not going to say a lot in this one, but as the title of my video uh, says, your um, understanding of, uh, of uh, Buddhism is very superficial, and you seem to uh, cherry-pick your data in a way that's very reminiscent of religious people, so I was very surprised because your other videos are not like that, and I'm not sure what happened in this video, but uh, you go on and on about reincarnation at the beginning of your video without <clears throat> mentioning the fact that the vast majority of Western atheists, uh, Western Buddhists, are in fact atheists as well, and the majority of them don't believe in an afterlife and don't believe in reincarnation. Uh, even the majority of Eastern Buddhists, uh, a large percentage of them don't believe in reincarnation anymore. It hasn't been really uh, something that has been believed. So you go to a website where they do believe in reincarnation. Well, there there are some, you know, uh, Christians that believe in the divinity of Christ and then some that don't. Um, there are Westerners that believe in uh, God and some that don't. and. So you, I, I, I don't think you want to whitewash an entire religion. Certainly the idea of reincarnation is bizarre and stupid <clears throat> for reasons that you've said, but it doesn't apply to most Buddhists, especially in places like Japan and South Korea where the vast majority of the people are Buddhist but are also atheist and almost none of them believe uh, in any kind of gods or goddesses or afterlifes or, or reincarnation, the vast majority of them. Um, I also think that you don't mention a lot of things about Buddhism, about what it is as a philosophy. You seem to uh, misrepresent the fact that it is a philosophy. Remember that both Buddhism and Hinduism and uh, Confucianism and Taoism have uh, philosophical elements that are purely philosophical. They had sage, sages that uh, worked within the philosophical realms of those religions, but did not partake of the religious part. In fact, Buddhism and Confucianism and Taoism existed as philosophies for centuries before they ever became religious, before anyone decided to deify the Buddha or to add gods to Buddhism. Remember, the <clears throat> original Buddhist, original Taoist, and original Confucianist uh, scholars were all atheists. They went out of their way to say that they were atheists. Um, Confucius said that, uh, for instance, that um, uh, rituals were stupid. He went, I mean, he basically said a lot of the same things you say in your videos, uh, but he was saying them 2,500 years ago. Um, also, some of your other uh, things that you don't mention, such as the, the Eightfold Path and understanding what that is, uh, understanding the uh, Four Noble Truths, you can critique those and decide what you think doesn't make sense or maybe does make sense about them, but you don't even mention them when those are the heart of the philosophy, what the philosophy is about. I mean, all Buddhism is is an Eastern version of the Western philosophy of um, Stoicism. In fact, we have lots of philosophies in the West that are, in fact, dogmas, that are, in fact, religions. We just don't call them that. Communism is a religion. Fascism is a religion. Two very destructive religions. <clears throat> Probably more destructive than Christianity has ever been. Um, but there's a religion called Americanism. Uh, the beliefs of our, of our founding fathers, the beliefs of the Enlightenment, many of those things are based on skepticism, but many of them are assertions of values that are based on nothing but a leap of faith. They're dogmas. Our constitution is based on a number of dogmas. Um, it's based on a number of beliefs about how a government should be run, but it's really a series of values that we 
assert makes sense in the world and that we think makes sense in the world, but you and I both know that our form of government has been tried all over the world and failed miserably in many different places. So, again, you know, we do have philosophical religions or phil philosophies in the West, we just don't call them religions because the word religion is so vague uh, that uh, we don't recognize the fact that we have Buddhist ideas that sprung up in the West independently. Um, Epicureanism is similar, Stoicism is, is similar. Stoicism and Epicureanism were far more important to the philosophical and belief system of Romans in the Roman state than was their polytheistic religion. So that's, a, that's an interesting fact. Your concept of nirvana is bizarre. <clears throat> you define nirvana by, again, going to some website as if nirvana were an easily definable thing. And you talk about uh, it, it uh, being something that has to be experienced directly, and then you roll your eyes, and so on and so forth. Well, <laughs> amazing atheist, come, come on now. If I were to try to describe to you the taste of a banana and you'd never eaten a banana, you wouldn't suddenly taste the taste of your of the banana in your mouth because I had explained what the taste was. You wouldn't suddenly know what the banana taste is like. You wouldn't know what that experience is. You would have to experience it directly, which is what the Buddha says about meditation. In order to understand what meditation can do for you, you've got to meditate for six months. You can't know otherwise. It's very difficult to explain it. I can't explain it in the same way that I can't explain to you what a banana is. What's the way to explain to you what a banana tastes like? It's to tell you to shut your mouth, open your mouth, you stick a banana in there, you start eating it, and then you know. If you want to know what meditation is about and what it can do for you, you have to read some research on it. But mostly you have to do it. And that's all that uh, people were talking about. All nirvana is, is a, is a metaphorical description of the experience of what it is like to meditate for a long period of time and to have its effect on your life and what it is like to feel what you feel like inside when you're meditating. And that feeling is, of course, the relaxation response, uh, um, realization or insight into your mind in, in specific ways, but it's very individual. That's why it's stated vaguely. And secondly, how do you describe that? It's like describing the taste of a banana. You talked about free from suffering and individual existence. Well, you're, 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 you're not understanding what those words mean. What they mean is that while you're deeply relaxed, in a deeply relaxed state, momentarily, you are free from your cares in the world. That's all that that, may, that means. When they talk about suffering, they're talking about frustration. When, when the Buddha was talking about suffering, he was specifically talking about not getting what you want about frustration and disappointment. That's, 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 his, that's his definition. He's not talking necessarily about physical suffering. But anyway, I wasn't going to talk for 10 minutes, and here I have done so again. Um, but again, I, I, I uh, uh, want to encourage you to go on making your atheist videos, but in the future, you might want to stop cherry-picking your data, and you might want to look at all of the evidence out there. By the way, there is a movement to create a philosophical Christianity in the West, which would be divorced from anything religious, would be completely philosophical, value-laden, but not related to some kind of theology. Uh, I would suggest to you that uh, that would be uh, an incredible improvement in our Western life if we had an atheist, uh, non-theistic version of Christianity where Christ becomes a teacher and whose teachings can be uh, uh, questioned. The Dalai Lama, by the way, said, has said, and I say this in my other video, that anything that in, in Buddhism that can be shown to be untrue scientifically should be abandoned. I don't know of any, any you know, I don't know of any leader in Christianity or Islam especially who would say anything like that. So I, th I think that says something. Anyway, this is Skeptic Sage reminding everybody that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and peace.